All right, so we've created the public subnets, the private subnets, created root tables, created internet gateways, NAT gateways, etc. So essentially, the framework of our VPC is 100% complete. However, what we want to do, we want to make sure we're going to test everything we created, make sure all those components are working properly and working fine. So in order to do that, we're going to be creating a Bastion host, which allows us to SSH into our private instances that we're also going to be creating. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Step number five is going to be for us to create our Bastion host. All right. So if we make our way to the EC2 console, I'm going to click here. We want to then go on the left hand side panel and click instances. And then we want to go ahead and launch instances, okay? Now again, our Bastion host is going to allow us to SSH into the private instances that we will create in the next step, okay? So for the name, we're just gonna name it Bastion host, okay? Uh, in order for us to stay in the free tier, we're just gonna keep uh, the AMI as Linux. We're gonna keep this the same, free tier, 64-bit, the instance type uh, my, uh, T2 micro, we're gonna keep all that the same, okay? Now scroll down for the key pair. We're gonna drop down and click proceed without key pair. Um, in this particular demonstration in this video, we're just going to uh, use EC2 Connect. So there's no need to have a key pair. However, if you're gonna use your own SSH client, you probably more than likely will need a key pair. And also, you know, when you're building infrastructures, you definitely wanna key pair for added security, okay? But just for this demonstration purposes, we're, gonna, we're not gonna add one here. Scroll down to network settings, click edit. Currently, they automatically have us as the default VPC. We wanna drop this down and click the demo VPC that we created. All right, we're gonna have our Bastion host in the public subnet A, okay? So for subnet, let's click public subnet A, which is availability zone A. All right, we want to go ahead and assign this EC2 instance a public IP, otherwise it will be private. So let's go ahead and put uh, enable public IP. And then lastly, we're gonna create a security group, all right? So let's go ahead and name the security group. We can just name it uh, Bastion Host SG. Okay, Bastion Host SG. So Bastion Host Security Group, all right? And from the SSH, we're going to allow SSH from anywhere. We already have it here. And you don't have to do anything for the description. We can just leave that what it is, okay? So that is all. Let's go ahead and click Launch Instance. All right, so let's go to instances, and this should be pending, all right? And we have successfully created our Bastion host. Okay, in step number six, we're gonna be creating our private instances. We're gonna have one in subnet A and one in subnet B, okay? And they're gonna be in the private subnets, okay? For both availability zone, all right? So we're already in the instance dashboard. Let's go ahead and click launch instances. All right, and we're gonna name this private instance A. So we're gonna make the uh, instance that's gonna be in uh, private uh, subnet A. Let's keep everything the same, Linux, architecture, T2 micro, all that the same, okay? And for the key pair, let's actually create a key pair. All right, and let's just name this VPC uh, key pair. I'm gonna keep everything else the same. And we're gonna click create key pair. Now this is gonna be important because um, once we actually SSH into our Bastion host that we created in the previous step, we're then going to need this key pair in order to SSH into this EC2 that we're currently creating, okay? So as you can see, it has been uh, created and it's downloaded on my, on my computer. So make sure that file, put it and store it in a safe location because we will need the contents of that uh, key pair of that file shortly, okay? So I have mine saved. So let's keep going down, edit network settings, change from the default to demo. And we're also going to keep private subnet A. So it's already on private subnet A. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna make sure that the public IP is disabled, correct? Cause it's not, uh, it's not a public IP, it's not a public instance, excuse me. And then lastly, we're gonna create a security group, all right? So let's name the security group uh, private instance SG, okay? Uh, I'm gonna leave the description as uh, the default. I'm not gonna change that. And now next thing that I wanna do, I wanna add, actually, you know what? It's already right here. So instead of SSHing from anywhere, we want to change that and make it custom. And we want to only allow requests that are coming from 
our security group of our bastion hosts, okay? So we want to limit uh, and control who has access to SSH into this private instance. And it should only be the person who has access to SSH into our bastion host. So in order to make sure we enforce that, let's attach, um, you know, our bastion host right here. Let me go back to it. So make sure we attach our bastion host security group. So whoever goes through our bash home security group can then SSH into our private instance that we're creating here, okay? So that's how we add the extra level of security to control who has access to SHH, okay? So that is it. And we're going to click launch instance. So that is launching. Okay, let's go back to the instance dashboard. And we're going to do the exact same thing for private instance B, which is going to be the uh, in, the, uh, in the availability zone B, okay? So let me go ahead and quickly go through that. Let me go ahead and type it, private instance B. Scroll down, we're gonna keep everything the same. We're gonna use the same key pair that we just created, VPC key pair. Scroll down, edit the network settings, switch it to the demo VPC. Instead of private subnet A, this uh, instance is gonna be in private, private subnet B. Uh, keep that disabled. Instead of create security group, we're just going to select what the security group we just created, which is private instance SG. It's the exact same rules we want in this uh, instance as well. And just click launch instance. All right, perfect. Let's go back to the dashboard. Okay. And that completes step number six. Okay. Step number seven is going to be for us to SSH into our bash and host, as well as SSH into our private instances and pretty much test the entire infrastructure and make sure we have proper connectivity all right so this is going to be a pretty long step so let's go ahead and dive right into it so if you look at the screen i'm already within the instance dashboard so the first thing you want to do is ssh into the bastion host okay so we're going to click bastion host select it right here and for ssh we're just going to click connect okay and we're going to make sure you click the tab ec2 instance connect and then click the connect button down here. All right, so again, we're gonna use the EC2 connect in order to SSH instead of using an outside client. So right now, let's see if it connects. All right, perfect. So we have successfully connected to our uh, public Bastion host EC2 instance. Now that we've SSH into our Bastion host, we wanna go ahead and test to make sure that it has access to the internet, okay? So what we wanna type in, let's just type the command ping and let's just type in uh, the Google website, right? So www.google.com. All right, and let's see if we receive feedback. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, we are receiving feedback. So I'm on a Windows computer. I'm gonna hold Shift, Control, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna hold Control and C, my bad. And if you get that same response, that means that you have successfully uh, set up your root tables and your subnet and your internet gateway, okay? Now, the next thing and the last thing that we're going to test, we want to go ahead and SSH into our private instance and make sure that that has access to the internet through our uh, NAT gateway, okay? So in order to do that, we first must upload our key pair into this terminal, okay? And the key pair that I'm referring to is the VPC key pair that we created when we made our private instance A, okay? So in order to upload that file, let's use the command nano. And let's type in the key pair name, and it's called VPC key pair dot PEM. Hit enter. All right. So next, what you want to do, you want to go ahead and go to your uh, file that's on your device, your computer, and you want to open it up and copy all the content. I already have mine copied, so I'm going to just hit shift control V to paste it all in here. Okay. Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and hit uh, control X to exit, and then hit Y for yes, and then lastly hit enter. All right, perfect, all right? So now that we have the uh, VPC key pair uploaded, the text file uploaded into this terminal, the next thing we want to do, we have to change the permissions of it, okay? We must make our VPC key pair only read and write access for users and nobody else, okay? So the current uh, permissions that the default uh, that, that is defaulted to is not correct. So let's use the command chmod that will allow us to change the permissions and let's use the code 400. And the code 400 allows read and write just for the owner, which is what we want. And let's type in VPC 
key and you actually just put tab and it'll, it'll finish it. So VPC, or you could just put V and hit tab. Okay. Hit enter. All right. So we've properly changed the permissions and pretty much that is the only setup. So now we can actually use uh, the SSH in order to uh, the SSH command in order to SSH into our private instance. Okay. And so that command is going to be SSH. All right. And then it's going to be EC2 dash user at and what you want to do you want to open up a separate tab go back to the instance dashboard okay and we're trying to ssh into private instance a so i'm gonna click on that and what we're going to need is the private ip address so i'm gonna go ahead and copy that right here or you can just hit that copy right here right let's go back into the ec2 instance connect and i'm gonna hit shift control v okay so we're pretty much telling the system that we want to SSH into um, this particular uh, EC2 instance with this uh, IP address, okay? And lastly, we want to go ahead and add the key pair to give us some permission. So that's going to be dash I, make sure the dash and I are uh, side by side, then hit space. And you want to type in VPC key. Again, you can hit tab and it'll come up, all right? Now just hit enter, scroll down. It says, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Type in yes, Y-E-S, hit enter. And we have successfully SSH into our private instance via our Bash and Host, okay? So if you look at this right here, this is the IP address of our private instance, okay? And if you actually look right here, that's the private uh, uh, IP of our Bash and Host, okay? Now, so we're SSH into our private instance. Now we want to make sure that it has access to the internet okay so much like we did our bash and host let's just type in the command ping and then just let's use google so www.google.com let's say we have access all right perfect so we have access to the internet so i'm gonna hit control c and that is it ladies and gentlemen we went ahead and tested Make sure our bash and host had access to the internet. Make sure the root tables were correctly configured and routed. Made sure that uh, the internet gateway was routed. Um, and then we also did the same thing for our private instance to make sure that we still have access via the NAT gateway, okay? And so that will conclude the testing part of this video. As a side note, feel free to use the exact same steps and instructions shown here if you want to test the private instance in the availability zone B, so our private instance B, okay? So you can do the exact same thing. I'm not going to show it on this video because I already know everything is working properly, but if you want to go ahead and do that, just follow the exact same instructions uh, using the key pair and using this SSH command, okay? So that concludes it.